Hello, good evening to the Zarelli world out there. Um, we're starting now with our broadcast, finally, you might say. And finally, I must agree. Uh, unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties going into it, but now we're live and we're online. And I hope you will enjoy listening to us and hearing from Vanessa all these wonderful stories about point shoes. Um, let me just briefly introduce her. She uh, completes our global connection of superstars. We had uh, Jana Salenko from Europe and Maya from Europe, from the East Coast. We had Lauren Lovett. And now we have from the West Coast, from San Francisco Ballet, we have Vanessa Zahorian today, who is a very, very talented dancer. Hi. Um, and I can confirm because we actually danced together. Um, and she was the best partner ever to dance with, by the way, besides being such an, a wonderful, wonderful dancer. Um, we actually danced together, Diana and Acton, and you broke your foot doing Diana and Acton. Um, when, when was that exactly? You're completely back, recovered from that? So I'm completely back, I'm recovered. Um, that was in 2014. Uh, in January for the San Francisco Ballet Gala and I was dancing Diane and Actinon and um, so on stage I slid and rolled over my ankle, broke the fifth metatarsal but I didn't know at the time so I kept dancing and I came off stage after the adagio and uh, my foot started to swell a bit and Davi Carpetti and my husband came back and he's like, oh, you're okay, you're okay, just go on stage, you're fine, you're fine. So I finished the variation, you know, it's a lot of the jumping, attitude, control to come down, all on the right foot, which I broke. And um, so at the end of the whole piece, I, I felt like something was wrong with my ankle and I thought maybe I just jammed it or something. The doctors took a look at it. They said, okay, well, we'll see tomorrow how you feel. I woke up the next day and it was swollen, like Shrek's foot. And I said, there's something wrong with my foot. Um, I was supposed to do a Giselle run through that evening. And I was like, there's no way I can do this. So we went and got x-rays and it showed that I had a fifth metatarsal fracture. So, you know, I took off actually seven months trying to come back and um, you know after that so right now I feel like two years later um, better than ever strong you know it was a process and I had to really go from ground zero but you know I, I also feel like having that injury um, I have uh, learned a lot about myself and you know just like how it is to prepare and go back to the basics and you know I can freely dance. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I think that's pretty uber woman like. So basically you had a broken foot and you did the whole of Acteon still. I did. Or you finished it at I least. That's crazy. Because that's what we do. You know, as dancers we um, you know we, we're trained to do that and we are just muscle memory we go, we don't think about any of those you know, if, if you fall, you get back up and you keep going on. Did that change your work today a lot? You know, actually, it, it definitely did because I feel like I'm more conscious when I was coming back from the injury. I was very conscious of my placement and not compensating one way or the other, like rolling on my foot, per se. I really needed to have the stability on one leg. So when you break your foot, and especially the fifth metatarsal, you, your balance is way off. So even trying to walk again after that, with the crutches and the boot, and your boot is, is like this completely for two months or so. So gaining back the strength for one, right, and the confidence, and standing at the bar just in first position, you know, and finding the the correct balance of the hips and using your seat. It's all about the core and the seat muscles. So, yeah. But yeah, so basically I had to completely um, find my balance on one leg and do a lot of exercises. 
that's an insane amount of point shoes that you're going through throughout the year. You have to saw every single one, I'm guessing. So I can tell you a little bit about my shoes. So I, I'm actually wearing the Rapetto point shoe. And um, I've been wearing these actually ever since I broke my foot. Um, I actually wanted to try a different point shoe. So this is what they look like, the Rapetto point shoe. And so I'm actually wearing a size 5, which is a 38. And um, you know, they come in this light pink color, but I actually, to match my tights, I like to wear a little bit darker pink. So I have the, the women in the costume department dye my shoes, and I can show you the color. Here, I can tell you that obviously with the point shoes, you have to secure them to your feet when you're dancing. And so I have, this is the elastic that I can use in the ribbon. So, you know, you cut the elastic part that you want um, to, to fit your foot in the shoe. And this is the ribbon that I have. I cut four pieces. And um, usually there's two pieces that I have. One is shorter than the other and one is longer. So when I'm putting the shoes on my feet, so actually what it is is the longer one will go on the inside because they're going to wrap around from the you show here. So you're going to want the, can you see me? The longer one on the inside and the shorter one wrapping around on the outside. And I secure them on the inside with the knot. And I tuck them in right there. So they're nice and secure to my foot. So sometimes on the bottom for my performances, I like to score the bottom with scissors just for extra, you know, floor resistance in case if I don't have enough rosin or maybe possibly in the guessing where I'm going, they don't have rosin per se. So just by scoring them with the the scissors just gives it a little bit of resistance here. So, so that's the finished product with my point shoes. And I actually like, I prefer to have harder point shoes for classical ballet. And then softer, see these are broken in and already worn. Softer point shoes for contemporary or neoclassical. And um, there are different types of color for the ribbon. This is a lighter pink. And this is a darker peach. So depending on what color of point you, you know, like the lighter ones, I would wear this. And then the darker pink, I would wear these. So, you know. There's lots of choices. And then obviously you need the, to sew, you need the um, yarning thread and the needle. Um, but actually I can show you up close the, the way that I sew them. I do a lot of work. <laughs> I actually sew them all the way around to really keep the elastics in place and the ribbon because I've had quite a few instances where my ribbons will come undone or on stage and it's trial and error. You know, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> the first time my ribbons came off, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to be fired. <laughs> and um, it was really, I mean, it was, it was scary for the audience because they could actually hear the um, ribbons you know, or like the, the shoe when I stepped on it and I was like, it's okay, I'm not going to fall or anything. But uh, I ran off stage and, you know, you just quickly tie up your ribbons, attach them. The best way to tie them to keep them secure around right here is you could sew them or sometimes we put tape, masking tape around them. So 
at Scotch Tape. I think a lot of young kids appreciated this because that is all this experience that you just explained, they, they can just step right into being a professional, at least about their point shoe treatments. Let me go right into questions that people had, our followers had to you uh, about other stuff. And you can share your opinion and um, explain also a little bit how you deal with these issues, if, if I may. Imitation Ballerina says, I'd love to know if you wear padding in your shoe. Oh, that's a great question. And I was going to actually explain this. So, I wear very light padding. Um, so, I actually wear, it's kitchen napkins. And, um, because I don't like anything that's really um, thick and heavy inside the shoe. I like to feel the bottom of my point shoe and really articulate my toes. So this is all I wear. It's just this little piece of napkin and then I put it in my point shoe. So and actually it's it's fine because I am very used to it. I have the built up calluses on my toes <laughs> that all the ballerinas uh, gain. So this is all I wear in my point shoe. And um, Depending on the, the year or the season, actually, the time of the year, I wear this when I'm performing, or when I'm rehearsing in the summer. Just one little piece, because my feet are swollen. <laughs> They're swollen when I come back from a, a layoff. Like, let's say I have two weeks off that I haven't used my point shoes, and my feet are weaker. So. The toes are expanded and they're trying to get back those muscles and so they expand. So I wear a very light cloth because my toes don't fit. <laughs> Otherwise, when I'm performing, like at the end of the season, which is in May, I wear actually maybe, so this is a double sided. I wear this in my shoe because my shoes get big for me of all of the ballets that I'm doing, the full length ballets, and you're just very in shape, very much in shape, and I get smaller, so everything gets smaller. <laughs> yeah, and so um, this is what it looks like, and then I just cut it, I cut it down like this, to whatever size that I want to be. Um, so you just cut it down, and then cut, cut this in half. That's what I use. No toe pads. You probably need a lot of point shoes. How many point shoes do you need a year? So I was calculating actually, and uh, the company gives us 15 pairs of point shoes per month. And we're working about 10 months out of the year. So there you have it. That's all my point shoes <laughs> that I wear, give or take, depending on in one month, if I'm doing a full length ballet, I'm going to need more point shoes. Um, if I'm doing contemporary, I don't need as many point shoes. Um, and actually, when I recently went to Taipei, I took, I had two performances and I was dancing two pieces, Ruby's and uh, Omega and Paduda. So I actually took eight pairs of point shoes. I wanted to be sure that I had enough shoes and what if one broke, you know, it happens that one shank is just collapsed even before you wear it. So I took eight pairs and I ended up wearing four of the shoes because I wanted to have a new pair that was perfect for that piece broken in and whatnot. So I had the two pieces per night, so four pairs. And then the other pairs of point shoes I wore for rehearsal for class. I like to wear point shoes for the center of the class. So for bar, I wear the flat ballet slippers to wake up my toes. You have to sew all of these point shoes all throughout the year. Yes. And so, in what kind of surrounding do you need to do? You need to be in a studio so you immediately can try it? Or can you do it at home in front of the TV or wherever? So for me, because I've been in point shoes for many years um, professionally, I actually don't need to be in the studio. 
I could be sewing pointers in front of the couch, you know, watching a movie, or now that's not my preferred <laughs> um, method. I like to actually do my work, like sewing point shoes, when I'm at work. So I like to do it on a break, on a five minute break, or if, you know, if I'm done with my lunch and then I have 15 more minutes, I'll sew some point shoes. Okay, so I love math which is great, somebody loving math, that certainly couldn't have been me. What do you think of high intensity interval training for dancers? Will it be good as cross training or is it something dancers shouldn't do? What is your opinion? I think that cross training actually is a great idea. I think that it, there are some muscles that in the ballet training that we don't um, strengthen that I think cross training would uh, you know, be really good for the other side to help and to kind of balance out the weaker muscles. Now, very cool. I think we have covered almost everything about point shoes. Or did, do you have something that you think we haven't covered yet? Mateo, there's one thing I could add that in order to be able to differentiate my point shoes from one another if I have a lot of, let's say, eight pairs lying around. So I just mark, I, I make little <laughs> messages like good shoe or bad shoe. And I'll wear the bad shoe for rehearsal, but I know that the shank is broken or whatnot, so I write little messages on the bottom or right and left or so. I can hear you perfectly. I can just wave to you goodbye and I hope that you see the waving. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in and we will keep in touch. It's good to see you, Mateo. Yes, keep in touch. Thank you. Bye.